How's it going everyone? Welcome to Flight DJI Maverick Air 2. Another review with Chris and Tommy. You guys ready? Let's do this and here we go. to tell everybody why we're here yeah we're here to do a review on DJI's uh, Maverick Air 2 right so we're taking off and we're actually flying over to grandma's right now just because I'm near grandma uh, have you ever lost control as far as lost in signal or have you crashed uh, lost signal yes crashed yes um, the first time I got my Maverick Air 2 I actually ended up crashing um, after the third flight when it was when it was really windy out and uh, we were going over we were in Kent Kent Washington and we were at the park um, I was doing a drone review a kind of like uh, testing some of the features that were on it to talk about some of the features that were on it it got was so windy that I lost control and it crashed into a tree there were some park guys that were working at the uh, park and they were tree guys so we hired them paid them to go take it down and so that was the only crash and that I've had with that said how easy is it uh, to learn how to fly the Maverick Air 2 there's everybody has a different way of starting off if you're a fast learner and if you know what you're doing of course you're gonna learn pretty fast but if you're somebody that doesn't know how to fly and doesn't know about flying very much and you want to take some classes there are a lot of people that take classes out there to learn and stuff and to uh, see what kind of tricks you can do with it because the, the Maverick Air 2 and great features that you can do you got your drone, you ordered it, you got it in. Uh, is there any special tools you need to set it up and how easy is it? It's easy to set up. All you have to do is snap on the propellers, snap on the blades, and then you're ready to fly. Um, you have to calibrate it. it. It helps out with like the sensors on it and it helps out with the camera on it so you can control the camera on the screen, zooming left, right, that's my style is every time I take off, that's something if you don't look at it in videos of mine that I do like to kind of angle up, down, up to the propellers and then down to the propellers, the lower legs, and then I'll go right from right to left or left to right. Then uh, taking the propellers off to replace them is a pretty easy tool. You already put it together, you have it calibrated everything. So how long from this, uh, from the time you take it out, whatever you carry it in, to set up to launch, how long roughly would you say that would take? Well, underneath a minute for the you know somebody that knows how to fly a drone already, or if you don't know how to fly a drone and you're pretty much new to it, you're kind of like ooh, you know what's on the legs, and ooh, let's put you know turn on the power, and ooh, let's you know watch it take off. I mean. And turning on the remote controller is pretty easy. You get up to your phone if you have a smartphone. Say you've been flying for a while and your battery is dead, but you uh, still want to fly some more and your other backup battery is already dead. Uh, and say your controller is running out of power. How long does it take for stuff to charge back up? Is it quick? Batteries, it depends on what kind of a drone you have. The DJI Maverick Air 2 takes uh, roughly an hour and a half to two hours to two, uh, for each battery. The Maverick Pro 2 takes around roughly two and a half, two, two, two and a half hours, it depends. So say like if you're running out of batteries, right? Well, choose on your batteries. Well, basically um, what it does is uh, you have either two options to land right there 
and your drone may be maybe two miles away and you have to go and get it when it lands or you could bring it back. It gives you a battery warning and it will also fly back to home, your home point, where you're, wherever you're at. This is a two-parter. First part is how does the video and photo do in just regular light? Regular light, you have, uh, you could do it manually, your, light, your camera manually, or you could set it up automatically. I recommend automatically because it depends on where you go, what you're doing for flying. The camera, the camera settings are pretty easy to do. You're flying 4K, baby, so 4K all the way. So my second part of the question is, how does it do in low life as far as video and photography? Video photography does really good. I could see Tommy, you getting one of these drones and using it for photography, for weddings, for uh, for a lot of different cinematic stuff. I mean, the cinematic on it, the photo, the video is very, very sweet, high quality all the way. Plus you have a zoom in, zoom out on the Mavic Air 2 that you could use. And it does help with what you're trying to accomplish as in as far as video and photography so if you say if you're filming or photographing the sunset and you know you're getting less light uh, does the quality get grainy or is it still pretty decent it's pretty decent and it doesn't get grainy DJI knew what they were doing when they worked on their cameras for any any Maverick series out there, even the Phantom, I have to say, they knew what they were doing. And a, a lot comes um, a long way when you're filming and when you're doing photography because it's not great, it's high quality. And what's the farthest distance that you have been comfortable with flying it? So I could go 400 knots. I'm very comfortable with taking it and pushing it all the way to see what I can do. Even if it loses, even if I lose signal, let's say I lose signal, I kind of know what to do in that situation. You don't freak out. And when you lose signal, you could put in to that setting, what does the drone do when it does lose signal? Do you want it to come back home or do you want it to, to stay there until you get signal back? Or do you want it to land? You kind of do learn to, like when you lose signal, like I said, you don't freak out. I mean, a lot of different people freak out, and and some don't, some do. But you learn to um, handle that situation and be like, okay, all right, I'll get signal back. Just gotta wait for it. All right. How does the tracking features uh, work with it? All right, is it good? OcuSync 2.0 is really great with um, you know getting you on camera. These these drones have different features to where you could pan around. You could go around. It, they have awesome things to track you. Um, like if you're needing a, a camera guy and you don't have a camera guy. And as far as trying to do other events, this will track people and it'll follow you. You could put it in follow mode or you could also basically um, have it go right beside you to film you as you're doing something. And how is it at avoiding objects when flying? Avoiding objects, it's pretty good. You know, there is a few times where, like I said, had a crash, can avoid uh, the object. Now, if you're in sports mode, sports mode is turbos for me. I mean, that means that you're going fast, super fast, at a high altitude. And so it turns off all the sensors. And when, when you turn off the sensors, uh, what happens is, so sensors turn off and so you're, you're more at risk for running into a tree, running into a building, running into somebody. For the time that you've had it, have it, other than crashing and everything, have you had any uh, major problems like with the software or anything? No, software is on it is easy. Um, it's easy to run on your phone, on the smart controller. If you're a Droid fan, then it's easy to run on your Droid phone. If you're a iPhone user, it's easy to run on your um, iPhone. Now, if you have the smart controller, that even helps a lot more because you get no interruptions flying. I recommend the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Pro 2 out there to people that are actually learning to fly. And even 
the tello that I had in the beginning stages, yeah, of course, you know, you wanna, you wanna make it easy to fly and then you wanna advance yourself all the way. And if you're serious about it getting into films, etc., you know, and you wanna use it for, um, to, to fly for other companies out there, of course you wanna learn all you can. I think it's great that it is easy to fold up, transport, and you can put it in any small uh, backpack, uh, carry-on, you can take it on a carry-on, you would have it down below the plane if you're worried about it getting damaged or anything. So it's something they could easily uh, bring with you on your carry-on bag. Uh, you could take it on a train. And if you just wanna go on your bike, you can also easily take it. So that's why I like the portability and that the fact that it's not cumbersome or you know too over bearing the size is good and then the video quality for i've seen the videos of people videos man including yours chris is great video quality i like it. it's good high quality it's good for the price you're getting exactly what you pay for you know you're paying an exuberant amount for it and then not getting good quality. No, you're paying a good price for good quality and that's my thoughts. So this has uh, been our review, uh, second review on the Maverick Air 2. We will do a review on the Maverick Pro 2 um, in the near future. Whenever we have time, we will sit down and do a, a, a main review of that as well because there's differences in drones, right Tommy? Yeah. Uh, don't forget to subscribe like this video, share with your friends, and see you next time. All right, and this has been a Top Level Media. Stay safe out there. All right, bye for now. Bye.